let's talk about uh, social media. So why do parents hate social media platforms like TikTok? So this is uh, an interesting one. Um, to me, I have the slides. TikTok is a very interesting platform because it makes it easier to move from video to video while still using those milliseconds of watch time to determine what to show you next. And so what this does is it leads to more aggressive and more suggestive content, as we had discussed earlier with YouTube. But I mean, what choice do you have when all of your friends are regularly posting on TikTok? Uh, I would say like the point of social media is to have that social interaction, right? And not necessarily for you to be the celebrity, but like just to have interaction with other people. So even if you aren't actively posting or you don't feel comfortable posting, um, you can still be active by commenting rather than just posting a, a bunch of stuff about yourself, right? It's about engaging with other people um, and how would you want to be engaged? Right? Like, how would you want other people to speak to you? Um, and so when you're posting and you're, you're talking about other people's stuff, you know, that that's a way of building that connection. However, if you do want to post things, and, and that's no problem, like a lot of people choose to do this as well. Um, just keep in mind how it might be used against you in the future. Look, I, I get it. Like, you know, parents also did things when we were young that we aren't proud of as well. Some of it is saved in photo albums. You know, some of it's stored online. <laughs> myself, like 100% guilty of having embarrassed myself uh, with many videos of me uh, archived both on YouTube and the ACM digital library, like an academic journal. But, you know, that's life. The key was in our time, um, employers generally went off of what you wrote on your resume and your interviews. So you could, you had a chance, you could clean things up when you applied for a job. And since we didn't have a lot of online job boards at the time, uh, employers had less selection of people. Uh, however, now we are in a globally competitive work environment. So it's normal for employers to look at your social profile just to get more information. It's normal. And so what this means is that we need to consider how our social media profiles look from the perspective of a potential employer. Are you the kind of person a company would want to hire, say, 10 years from now or five years from now? Uh, we know so many examples of politicians that have been grilled over photos or statements that were taken over 10 years ago when they were a totally different person. So keep in mind that we're not on social media to be famous. You know, others, they, they can be famous and broke. Uh, we want to use social media to make recurring revenue. And even if we are interested in freelancing or starting our own business, it helps to look at the LinkedIn profiles or maybe the social media profiles of people who have already made it or an area that's similar to where you want to go. What skills did they need to develop first? What what do they sell? Like what? How do they? How do? They, how do they make revenue? Is it through courses? Like what? What is the way that they they sustain their business? How do their posts that they have on social media help their business? And ultimately, if you're able to find out, what do you think would help their business the most today? The goal is to see if there's some value that you can add to the influencer so that you can connect with them, learn more from them, you know, develop that relationship. And you want to make sure that you're 
always adding value with every message. You don't want to be like, oh, you're so famous, you know, like, can you, can you please connect with me? That's, that's not really going to help, uh, especially in this world where there's always people like looking to connect with you in order to sell you something. Uh, so for example, like, let's say a, there's a business owner that you really like on TikTok. Great. What kinds of things do they share on TikTok? What, what kind of comments do they get? What are their goals? And what are the gaps that you could help fill to help them get to their goals faster? The key here is that since more people are more accessible than ever before, it means that we need to be that much better at getting to the point of why we're passionate about the same areas that they're interested in and where we think we can add value. So we, we've got to get to the point quicker. And this goes back to our discussion about parents. Talk to your parents about your goals with social media. Because we love to help you succeed. Or maybe find like if we can't, maybe we can find somebody who could help you get to your goals quicker. You know, I was really blown away at the number of parents bringing their kids to the VidCon conference uh, just to help them learn more about how to grow their own influence. They knew that, okay, look, I'm not a YouTuber and I, I can't really help with this, but I know there's a conference that covers this exact topic and I'm happy to drive eight hours, 12 hours, it doesn't matter. I don't, however far, rent hotels just to get you there. We parents are your biggest cheerleaders. We believe in you way before anyone else does. Getting us on your side will help you build a connection and it will potentially uh, create something together that everyone can feel good about. Like for example, maybe you're, you're hesitant to cold pitch influencers, right? Like go up to them and be like, oh yeah, I'd love for us to do a collab. And like the influencers like, yeah, go away. Like I get like a million of these emails every day, forget it, right? Like if you run this on your own, you're gonna have a much, much harder time. But even having a parent that you can role play with can make a huge difference for your confidence, your tonality, how you speak to other people. The first few times, no matter what, if you're, especially if you're cold pitching, are going to be rough. Like, let's be clear, they're going to be really, really rough. So why not start with the most forgiving audience out there? Your family, your parents. And I think that that's really the, the key here is we, we want to start with a, an audience that we know is going to be cheerleading for you, is going to be encouraging you, is going to help you. Um, and we want to connect. Like, honestly, we want to build that relationship. And maybe you do too. Or maybe you don't. I don't know. But if you do, sharing your goals for people, making them public, is one of the best ways to see momentum towards your goals. I know this because this is exactly what I did is uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to run a live stream every single week. I'm going to like, you know, post things on, on a regular basis, just making it public, getting others to, to see my stuff, like making things public. It's just, it seems kind of weird that you're making this public declaration to the universe saying like, yes, I'm going to be moving in this direction. And you see things happen. It's amazing. But people will not know what you want to do unless you start making it very clear and very explicit. You have to make that declaration. And if you're having trouble choosing one thing or having that, like, why not have more advice? Why not have more opinions that can get you towards the, the, the best idea for you right now? Right? Like not every parent is, is going to be supportive of everything, but at least hear them out. Like you don't have to follow exactly what they say. Ultimately, your decisions, you can you can go with wh what you want. But I think the key is 
is there anything that would be helpful there? Is there any information that you can use? Uh, my, my approach has always been like, you can learn from everybody. Don't think that you know more than everyone um, because then you'll never learn anything. So if you, if you think you know more than somebody else, uh, like, oh, I'm, I'm smarter than that person or I know more than that person, uh, you, you will not learn at all. Whereas if we decide, you know what, no matter what, this person has some knowledge, they have some experience that I don't have, you are going to find that you're going to learn a lot more. You're going to grow. And I think that that's really the, the key is you've got to be constantly growing um, because learning is earning, right? Really, like, you, you want to be, you want to start earning the big bucks, you're going to have to build that skill and Building that skill means constantly learning, right? And so what's the difference between the, like, who gets paid more that, uh, the example that we often use is, like, who gets paid more, the general practitioner or the specialist? It, it's often the specialist. And why? Why, why the specialist? Because that, that person has built a skill, like, a very high level of skill in one particular area. And you can't go to other people in order to, to get that. So it does, means that the skill doesn't get commoditized. And you think like, oh, maybe that's not a big deal. I'm like, it's the same skill that you use for even becoming a programmer, right? Like programmers, they don't just keep playing the game on their own and expect that somehow they're just going to naturally improve. They play, but then eventually they get a coach. And the coach is the one who has objectivity on what they're doing and says, hmm, you know, like you're doing really well on these things, but these are some other things that you could really improve on. And that's going to make a big difference for your uh, performance in, in even some of the pro games. And so I, I looked at it before. There are programs, there are online programs for coaching, uh, even for pro, pro league sports. And that's great. You know, just like any sport, like you want to have a, a coach, somebody who can guide you. And I think that that is where uh, it becomes really interesting because everybody's unique. Everybody moves at a different pace. Everybody has different things that they want to focus on. So how do we how do we become successful in this space? Because the goal is not just to, oh, I want to like get a lot of followers because you can ha we, we kind of explained that you can have a lot of followers and still not make above the poverty line. 